Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Right, so this is our eleventh lecture, our second last lecture, and today we're going to look at the Act and legal requirement on green hashtag compliance, and what are um, bodies that involve in this um, green technology or green concept internationally and also uh, locally in Malaysia and on um, and the um, involved regulation so let's first look at uh, the involved international bodies okay before before we go further First, I would like to introduce you um, a bit on um, Montreal Protocol. This is an international protocol um, that that uh, that worldwide uh, agreed to protect human health and also the environment again uh, against the adverse effect of depletion of ozone layer. All right. And this protocol is administered by United Nations Environment Program UNEP, and they maintain the list of ozone depleting substances that are targeted for control practices to reduce. And there are stages where these um, substances will be totally phased out. All right. So basically, it is signed um, in 1987 and this protocol called Montreal Protocol to protect the ozone layer and um, the signatories um, there, there is uh, 197 all United Nations members as well as um, several other countries but now maybe it is a bit change so for this 2021 you can check uh, by yourself but basically this protocol is to protect um, the, the ozone layer against uh, the ozone depleted uh, ozone depleting substances and it is signed in Montreal. That is why um, the protocol is named after the place where it is signed. All right. Um, under this Montreal protocol, um, there are several categories um, or several, I mean, lists of chemicals that are subjected, subject to different control requirements. And all the countries that have signed this protocol has to commit uh, to stop uh, the production, to stop the consumption or production of chemicals in groups NX A. Um, I will give you the list, but you can also Google yourself. But I, I will give you the list in Ulen and stop consumption or production of group 2 of NX A. A uh, and basically the the group two of NX A is um, halons, and then um, the countries should stop consume or produce the chemicals on group one, two, and three of NX B after 1996, and basically this is a group uh, of CFCs. And the countries also has to stop reduce sorry to reduce the consumption or the production of hydrochlorofluorocarbons listed in group one of NX C to nineteen eighty nine levels. And they also have to reduce the consumption and production of metibromide to 75% of 1991 levels beginning 1999 
So, uh, the regulations for this um, is issued by EPA, Environment Environment uh, Environmental Protection Agency, um, under Section six hundred one to uh, until six six hundred seven of the Clean Air Act to implement the Montreal Protocol. All right. Right, so basically in this protocol, uh, there are several uh, groups of substances, um, for example CFCs, that uh, by now it is already totally uh, phased out. And HCFC is on the way um, to be phased out soon. And... Um, HFC should be used later on or maybe can is already used now and um, yeah uh, it is not is it is still allowed to to be used all right that one is for the ozone uh, protection but now there are other protocol name uh, Kyoto protocol and this protocol is um, the signatories um, is a UN framework com the signatories to the 1992 UN United Nations framework convention on climate change and basically this protocol um, it is entered into force in early 2005 and it is uh, for uh, for greenhouse gas emission uh, to, to reduce the greenhouse gas emission so every country that uh, agreed to this protocol they are obligated to um, to give their commitment um, for example, they said, okay, by 2020, um, we want to reduce 20% of our greenhouse gas emission. Then they have to commit to it. Um, but in uh, the Kyoto Protocol is not signed by... Um, by, I mean... Sorry, the, the the Kyoto Protocol. Um, there are countries that do not sign the Kyoto Protocol. Um, only one uh, one major industrialized nation, which is United States, has not ratified Kyoto Protocol. All right, and this protocol is signed in Kyoto. That is why the name is after the place. Right, so maybe the, the f further information you can um, uh, read by yourself. But the thing is, the Kyoto Protocol is to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And the other one, Montreal Protocol, is to protect the ozone layer um, against um, ozone depleting substances. Right. In order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, as well as in, uh, increase of energy security, um, lots of countries has established targets for renewable energy. And as for Malaysia, we targeted 20% uh, by 2020 should be uh, an energy mix between electricity and renewable energy. And the Renewable Energy Policy Agenda, um, Greenpeace and the Renewable 
renewable industries have clear agenda for the policy changes that need to be made to encourage a shift to renewable sources. Um, so in the uh, in Greenpeace, they they have stated m the main demands are uh, phase out all subsidies for fossil fuels and nuclear energy, so that everyone st will be starting to shift to renewable sources. So internalize external costs through cap and trade emission trading and mandate strict efficiency standards for all energy consuming appliances buildings and also vehicles and establish legally binding targets for renewable energy and also combine heat and power generation and reform the energy markets by guaranteeing priority access to the grid for renewable power generators and provide defined and stable returns for investors for example through fit-in tariff payments and um, in our previous lecture we have talked about um, fit-in tariff and also net energy metering so that is one of the initiative to encourage the shift to renewable sources so that everybody will be involved in this initiative all right so there is also better labeling and disclosure mechanism to provide more environmental product information and by increasing the research and development budgets for renewable energy and also energy efficiency and as we know there are many grants now um, i mean in the especially in academic area um, for this um, I mean for the research that has um, to do with renewable energy and also um, energy efficiency all right so the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change um, on, uh, in 1992, there are open for signature in Rio, Gen uh, Rio de Janeiro and the UN, UN Framework Convention on Climate Change is effect, uh, has, I mean was effective, uh, is effective in 1994 and in 1997, Kyoto Protocol is included in binding obligation um, for the year 2008 to 2012 for developed countries and in 2012 um, the the UNFC on climate change has been has been amended um, for the year 2013 to 2020 in Doha and in 2010 it is um, de it is decided that the future global warming should be limited to under 2 degrees C and in 2015 um, Paris agreement has taken place and it is adopted uh, effective since 2016 and from 2020 on the global warming should not be uh, should not exceed 1.5 degrees C so you can found this uh, sorry you can find this United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change um, at this website HTTPS um, double dot then unfccc.int right check out yourself all right let's talk about malaysia so there are um, several bodies that involve in this green uh, renewable energy um, shift and also other green um, technology in malaysia so the one is 
National Green Technology and Climate Change Council uh, or known as MTHPI basically this is an uh, institutional framework to formulate strategies and policies relating to green technology and climate change in Malaysia and the council is served by the joint secretariat under Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, KETA and also the Mineral, uh, sorry, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, NRE. But now, MTHPI is now rebranded to Climate Change um, Malaysian Green Technology and Climate Change Center or known as MGTCCC okay you can check this out in the slides and um, the rebranding is since October 2019 right so specifically uh, the functions of the MTH uh, MTHPI or UN uh, MGTC MGTCCC is actually to determine the policies and the directions of green technology on uh, and also the climate change and they have to identify the strategic issues to advance the green technology in Malaysia and they also coordinate the issues relating to green technology and climate change at national level and monitor and also evaluate the effectiveness of policies relating to green technology and climate change in the country so this is the original functions of MTHPI so like regulations um, I in this um, video I won't tell you exactly what under what act is everything um, is put I mean um, the execution and all but basically everything is planned in Malaysian plan and we'll see um, what is the original target and since when um, renewable energy um, is uh, is put in Malaysian plan so now we first see the energy demand in Malaysia all right in 2000 in year 2000 the Malaysia's commercial demand for energy is one point uh, sorry 1244 petajoule and in 2010 Malaysia's commercial demand for energy is estimated um, at that time is 2,218 petajoule which is almost twofold from 2000, the usage in 2000 and in 8th Malaysian plan which is for the year 2001 to 2005 the Malaysia's government has declared that renewable energy is uh, should be the country's fifth fuel in the energy supply and at that time um, our usage um, our gas usage is 70 percent the coal usage is 22 percent oil 2 percent and hydropower is 6 percent but by now it should be um, decreasing and renewable energy uh, the percentage of renewable energy resources um, has increased All right let's see the renewable energy in uh, ninth Malaysian plan All right so renewable energy um, is further reinforced in ninth Malaysian plan uh, which is for the year 2006 to 2010 and it is emphasized towards energy efficiency both on production not only production but also the utilization and this initiative is also to meet the environmental objectives okay and by 2010 renewable energy 
um, at that time is expected to contribute 350 megawatt to total energy supply in Malaysia which is projected to reach 3,128 petajoule and renewable energy has uh, in Malaysia there are many sources of renewable energy including biomass, um, solar, hydro um, and so on and biomass such as rice husk palm oil bio waste should be used on wider basis for power generation and followed by solar energy right and in this case of solar power um, the climatic condition in Malaysia are favorable for development of solar energy due to abundant sunshine with average daily solar insulation insulation is 5.5 uh, kilowatt meter square which is equivalent to 15 megajoule per meter square area all right and um, under small renewable energy power program or known as SREP um, these small power plants use um, renewable energy um, and uh, can be applied to sell electricity to utilities company to through distribution grid systems and this project applies to all types of renewable energy including biomass, biogas, municipal waste, solar, mini hydro and wind and in 2005 um, there's a project called MBIPV or Ma uh, Malaysian Building Integrated Photovoltaic Technology Application Project and this project duration is 5 years um, and the PV is, uh, is installed on the facade of the building, on the roof and so on um, to promote wider utilization and application of photovoltaic technology in buildings with the hope that um, eventually this will create a sustainable and widespread MBIPV market in Malaysia and yes now as we can see a lot of factories um, masjids mosques um, they have applied this uh, f um, building integrated photovoltaic system all right and with the uh, um, initiative from the government um, which support uh, this kind of project they can export to the grid uh, they can apply for net energy metering and if the the application is successful uh, and they also can convert this net energy metering to um, fit in tariff provided that uh, there is quota for uh, fit in tariff okay and at that time, uh, several small-scale solar project uh, is also, are also in, uh, have uh, has been have been implemented uh, to explore the availability of using solar application for everyday uh, everyday business. And yes, it is proof that um, solar can be further utilized in wider applications. Right and solution for energy crisis and environmental issues. The energy efficiency strategies uh, has been implemented under Ninth Malaysian Plan, and the aim the energy saving features in industrial and also commercial sectors, um, and energy efficiency features um, consists of uh, involves efficient lighting and also air conditioning system and um, this EE features also encourage the establishment of the comprehensive energy management system and if you can see in certain buildings we use uh, EMS energy management uh, system that you can control the, ener the energy usage um, 
effectively. And under the Malaysian Industrial Energy Efficiency Improvement Project, or known as MIIEIP, uh, um, energy audits has been executed to identify ways for potential energy savings and um, it is undertaken in 11 energy intensive industries at that time which are cement, ceramics, food, glass, iron and steel, pulp and paper, rubber and wood, oleochemical, plastic and textile industries. And on the government front, um, several uh, new sources such as solar and wind um, will be developed uh, by utilizing cost-efficient uh, cost technology um, under this ninth Malaysian plan. So it has been executed by now. And wind is not uh, widely used since Malaysia has um, low wind. Um, you can use a uh, vertical type uh, wind turbine but um, the, the energy is not that much and in this regard uh, in, the, in this regard in Malaysia, 9 Malaysian plan there are efforts that has been undertaken to coordinate R&D activities of various energy related research centers and at that time the government has also launched several fiscal incentives to stimulate the emergence of renewable energy and energy efficient activities and technologies and this incentive includes the pioneer status investment tax allowance and import and sales tax exemption for equipment use in energy conservation all right, I think that's all from me uh, now. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.